to raise awareness about life-saving treatments. BNC spoke with the CEO of the Colorectal Cancer Alliance about prevention. Yeah, it's incredibly important. You know, you think about now, we're talking about, you know, our, our, our breasts and mammograms at the Thanksgiving Day dinner, dinner table. It's time we start talking about colonoscopies, et cetera, uh, screening for colon cancer at the Thanksgiving Day dinner table. And I would say you have to be your own advocate. 85% of people under the age of 50 are misdiagnosed, meaning they, like yourself, they go into their physician, primary care physician, et cetera, and they say, oh, you know, you've got hemorrhoids or, you know, you're nervous or something. Take some Metamucil and then come back. And unfortunately, when they come back, oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes, it's then actually cancer. So I would just say anybody listening that has those symptoms, I would, especially if they've persisted for longer than a month, demand that you either have a colonoscopy or some sort of screening test. Being your own advocate, especially if you're under the recommending screening age, can certainly save your life. According to cancer.org, African Americans are about 20% more likely to get colorectal cancer and about 40% more likely to die from it than other races. Joining us now to talk about this issue is our chief medical editor, Dr. Corey Abair. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Abair. So uh, we hear so much about COVID-19, of course, but people are still suffering from other health problems. Tell us what we need to know about colorectal cancer. Well, you know, colorectal cancer is one of those cancers that is so pervasive in our society. We really don't know why African Americans really have so much uh, uh, problem with the colorectal cancer. But what we do know is that the social determinants of health make all the difference in the world. So that when I say social determinants of health, that means where we live, where we love, where we work, and where we play. The reason why is because we don't have access to health care. When we talk about cancer, prevention is number one. And if you don't have access to good health care, then that means you cannot go to the doctor. You cannot go to the nurse practitioner. You cannot get uh, the, the, the health care that you need, and you can't get your preventive screenings. The second thing is that we don't live in a place, uh, a lot of times where they have good food, which means you have horrible, horrible food with low fiber. You don't um, get enough fruits and vegetables. You don't have enough of the vitamins that you need. And then that is just a toxic mix of, uh, of a situation that's going to cause you to have colorectal cancer. And the symptoms can be very, very uh, insidious, meaning that you have uh, unexplained weight loss. You can have night sweats, a little bit of blood in your stool or a black stool, a long, thin, tarry stool. Uh, you know, so these things can be something that, well, you know, if I just have a couple of bad dinners, you can feel like maybe that's what it is. But if you have these things, you really need to get uh, checked out. We are seeing so many cancers and ailments, diseases that are specifically affecting African-American communities more than any other communities. What can people do? I mean, I know and we know that the healthcare system is messed up. Let's put it to pull it mildly, but what can they do, sure. if anything, to prevent this? Well, what we need to do is just remember that we have to be able to get good care. And how do we do that? We need to sign up for insurance. Most people that actually have insurance, as a matter of fact, 80% of people that have insurance don't go to the doctor yearly. So think about the amount of people that, that don't have insurance that, that don't go, right? So we know that we have the Affordable Care Act. We're still being able to put people on, on Medicaid that had never actually been uh, able to, uh, to get Medicaid. And so these are the types of things that you must do so that you can get your screenings. And you have to be an advocate for yourself, meaning that if you have these symptoms and you're 35, then someone may say, well, you don't really deserve, quote unquote, to get a colonoscopy because you're not 40 years old. But if you have a a family member, especially a first degree relative, and you're an African American, that means your mother, your father, your brother, your sister who has colon cancer or any cancer for that matter, then you need to get screened. And and, and if you fight enough, your doctor will do it and they'll be able to do it. Uh, but but most doctors are not just going to just say, okay, I'll do it if you're below the, the screening age. So that's why you have to be an advocate for yourself. Are there pre existing conditions that um, can lead to colorectal cancer? Yes, uh, if you ha if you have any type of issue in your colon that you've had since you were a child, or if you have a history of colon polyps. Now, when you get a, a colonoscopy, some people have polyps, and these are very benign lesions. But if you have more than two or three polyps in your colon, then they were going to recommend that you come back and get another colonoscopy. So the polyps in the in the uh, in the colon, especially in family members, also is a pre-existing condition that could lead you to want to think more about getting a colonoscopy because those are the things that will develop into the cancers.